Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, June the 8th of 2023. This evening we begin with a reading from Henry Nowen, and our prayers tonight come from the Church of Scotland's Book of Common Worship. Celebration belongs to God's kingdom. God not only offers forgiveness, reconciliation, and healing, but wants to lift up these gifts as a source of joy for all who witness them. In all three of the parables that Jesus tells to explain why he eats with sinners, God rejoices and invites others to rejoice with him. Rejoice with me, the shepherd says. I have found my sheep that was lost. Rejoice with me, the woman says. I have found the drachma I lost. Rejoice with me, the father says. This son of mine was lost and is found. All these voices are the voices of God. God does not want to keep his joy to himself. He wants everyone to share in it. God's joy is the joy of his angels and his saints. It is the joy of all who belong to the kingdom. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord God of hosts, who is like you? Your strength and faithfulness, Lord, are all around you. The heavens are yours, the earth yours also. You formed the world and all that is in it. Your throne is founded on righteousness and justice. Love and faithfulness are in attendance on you. Happy the people who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long. Your righteousness will lift them up. Blessed be the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever, find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day. And from Luke 11, chapter uh, pardon me, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything out of friendship, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asked for a fish, would give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asked for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This evening I'd like to share with you another reading from Henry Nouwen. This is from his book, Here and Now. And this is his account of 
a meeting he had with a rather remarkable woman. Once, quite a few years ago, I had the opportunity of meeting Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I was struggling with many things at the time and decided to use the occasion to ask Mother Teresa's advice. As soon as we sat down, I started explaining all my problems and difficulties, trying to convince her of how complicated it all was. When after 10 minutes of elaborate explanation, I finally became silent, Mother Teresa looked at me quietly and said, Well, when you spend one hour a day adoring your Lord and never do anything which you know is wrong, you will be fine. When she said this, I realized suddenly that she had punctured my big balloon of complex self-complaints and pointed me far beyond myself to the place of real healing. In fact, I was so stunned by her answer that I didn't feel any desire or need to continue the conversation. The many people waiting outside the room to see her could probably use her time better than I. So I thanked her and left. Her few words became engraved on my heart and mind and remain to this day. I had not expected these words, but in their directness and simplicity, they cut through to the center of my being. I knew that she had spoken the truth and that I had the rest of my life to live it. Reflecting on this brief but decisive encounter, I realized that I had raised a question from below and that she had given me an answer from above. At first, her answer didn't seem to fit my question, but then I began to see that her answer came from God's place and not from the place of my complaints. Most of the time, we respond to questions from below with answers from below. The result is more questions and more answers and often more confusion. Mother Teresa's answer was like a flash of lightning in my darkness. I suddenly knew the truth about myself. Let us pray. We praise you, O God. We give you thanks, the God of nature and the God of grace and the giver of all good. For the world you have made with its wonderful landscapes, its changing seasons, its teeming life. For the life you have given us with its opportunities and responsibilities, its routines and delights. For the history we have inherited with its treasures of art and science and its variety of ordinary human goodness for the joy and care of our homes, for the food we eat, the friendships we cherish, and the health we enjoy. For all the bounty of your providence, we praise you and bless your holy name. We praise you that at the appointed time you sent your son born of a woman to live and work in our world, to seek and save the lost, to suffer and die on the cross, to rise victorious over death, and to rule at your right hand forever. We thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to the church and to the world to lead us into truth, to point the way to goodness, to increase among all people the spirit of sympathy, sympathy and understanding. Make us worthy of your goodness. Open our hearts to love and praise you and inspire us always to live for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God of all kindness, you gave your only son because you loved the world so much. We pray for the peace of the world. Move among us by your spirit. Break down barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred. Heal the human family of its divisions and unite it in the bonds of justice and peace. We pray for our country. Enrich our common life. Strengthen the forces of truth and goodness. Teach us to share prosperity, that those whose lives are impoverished may pass from need and despair to dignity and joy. We pray for those who suffer. Surround them with your love, support them with your strength, console them with your comfort, and give them hope and courage beyond themselves. We pray for our families, for those whom we love. Protect them at home. 
support them in times of difficulty <clears throat> and anxiety, that they may grow together in mutual love and understanding and rest content in one another. And we pray for the church. Keep it true to the gospel and responsive to the gifts and needs of all. Make known your saving power in Jesus Christ by the witness of its faith, its worship, and its life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Go in the peace of God in whom there is no darkness, but the night shines as the day. May he renew your hearts with quietness, your bodies with untroubled sleep, and may he waken you to use his gift of life with faith and joy. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this night and always. Amen. Good night.